Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about why I don't think the Giants need to draft a quarterback this season. And uh, I think it's very interesting. I could also make an entire video on why they do need to draft a quarterback. But for this video... For the purposes, for the idea of this, I am going to go under the theme that the Giants do not need to draft a quarterback. Here's why. My first point would be that you don't necessarily need a stud quarterback to win games. Now, because I'm not saying Eli Manning is a stud quarterback by any means. I think Eli is regressing quickly. He is almost 40 years old. He's 38, just turned 38 years old in early January on the third so happy belated birthday Eli <laughs> he had an up and down season to say the least now his numbers don't look terrible in 16 games had a 66 percent completion percentage and I don't really take a lot of stock in completion percentage although that was six points higher than his career completion percentage which is 60.3 if you guys take stock in that he threw for almost 4,300 yards was just one yard shy with 4,299 yards and he has only thrown for over 4,300, once in 2015, then again in 2014, and then again in 2011. So this is his season where he threw for the fourth most passing yards of his career. However, the touchdowns uh, is pretty down at 21. He had 19 in 2017, which is obviously not impressive. Only 18 in 2013. Uh, and then had 21 in 2008. But generally, Eli is around what appears to be 26, 25. Sometimes has been into the 30s for touchdowns in a season. So this season was not fantastic in terms of overall touchdowns. But interceptions was also much lower. This is the lowest amount of interceptions he's ever thrown in his career, except for 2008. However, he only had 21 touchdowns in that year as well and uh, only threw for 3,200 yards. So this year, he had almost 1,000 yards uh, more than that considerably. It was like 1,050 like or 60 or something like that. And his yards per attempt this year is 7.5, which is the third most ever in his entire career. 7.9 in 2009 and 7. Uh, no, excuse me, 8.4 in 2011. So those were his two. So this was... His season where he threw for the third most yards per attempt in his entire career. Now, to me, that doesn't scream replace him immediately. And I do recognize that he has his faults. He's uh, the least mobile quarterback in the NFL, probably. But as for pure stats goes, Eli had arguably either the third or fourth best year of his entire career. I know touchdowns, not fantastic with only 21 but this was arguably a top five, and I would say it's definitely a top five season for him over the span of his entire career, starting in 2004, all the way through 2018. He is, of course, a multiple Super Bowl winning quarterback, multiple time Super Bowl MVP, although I don't really care. I lo obviously love the Super Bowls, but when you're talking about him now as a player, the quarterback, you know, the Super Bowl MVP, the quarterback's pretty much always going to win that. And it, not always, but pretty much. And I don't think I can take a lot of stock in those Super Bowls, you know, analyzing his ability now as a quarterback. But I think it does go to say, it does go to show that Eli, in his downfall, was a bit overhyped this year. Also considering he was sacked 47 times. That is a multiple sack year uh, on his next highest 39 in 2013 was the next highest. And the next highest next to that is 28, or 30 and then 28, um, or 31 in 2017. Too. And the offensive line has been terrible. At the start of the year, Nate Solder was a, revol a revolving door at left tackle. We know about Eric Flowers, who got cut and then signed by the Jaguars. Chad Wheeler at right tackle was terrible. The Giants were down to their third string center in Spencer Pulley uh, for a lot of this year. At right guard, they were terrible until they got Jamon Brown, who was actually better near the second half of the season. So 
I think all this talk about, oh my God, the Giants have to replace Eli immediately. He's the reason that they're so bad. Well, Eli was, was decent at least. And the rest of the team was bad. The defense, I could go on and on and on about. What I'm going to do is an off-season video for every single team projecting what they should do or what I think they should do, what they need to do in order to get better. So I'm going to be doing an off-season preview for every single team in the NFL, or at least that's my goal. I'll probably start with the Giants. I might go draft order. It depends. But I could talk and talk and talk about the Giants and how bad they are at seemingly every level of their team. On the offensive side of the ball, we'll touch on it very briefly. Odell, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, those are really your only solid starters in the receiving core. I don't care for Russell Shepard or Cody Latimer or uh, anyone else in that entire receiving core. I know they, they played what? Uh, like Not Benny Fowler. Was it Benny? I think it was Benny Fowler. Yeah, he, he, he played like way more often than he should have. Um, pretty ridiculous, in my opinion, when you have a guy like Benny Fowler, who is a special teamer at best, getting, you know, first team reps consistently. It was uh, just pretty weird. Uh, and their defense is a disaster, an absolute disaster. Landon Collins is good. He is arguably your only good player in the entire secondary. Janoris Jenkins stepped off or stepped back considerably from what he was last year and the year before that. Janoris Jenkins was not good this year at linebacker. Alec Ogletree had a lot of interceptions with the five. I believe four of those were tipped. He was terrible in coverage overall. His run defense was atrocious. They started Tay Davis at inside linebacker as well. Tay Davis, come on. Really? Is that the best you're going to be able to do? Olivier Vernon played half the season, and I will touch on Olivier Vernon right now because we're here. I know this is about the Giants and quarterback. I do have to talk about this because it is relevant to who the Giants would actually take. Someone told me the Giants should trade Olivier Vernon because of his cap and, and how bad he's been. Well, Olivier Vernon was injured this entire season. He missed the first five weeks, didn't play at all through the first five weeks, and then got somewhat more consistent snaps as the season went on from about week six to week 10. He started to get rotated in a lot more often. Uh, he even had a sack in his first week back against the Philadelphia Eagles. And Olivier Vernon was not bad this year. He was not bad at all. He came back, and he was easily the best player on the entirety of the Giants' defense. He had seven sacks this year. Not terrible, especially considering that he didn't play the first five weeks of the season. This easily would have been a double-digit sack season for him. And he played the rest of the season injured. They want to trade Olivier Vernon, who had seven sacks in not even playing the first five weeks? That's amazing to me. Especially when you consider the fact that he had, I believe, 22 quarterback hits. I did the math, including six against the Cowboys in Week 17, uh, and two, uh, two and a half sacks there, which is incredible. For perspective, the most quarterback hits ever in a season um, from when they started tracking that. This is via Pro Football Reference. You should be something on the screen. Uh, J.J. Watt, 51 in 2014, 50 in 2015 2013 he had 46 and in 2012 he had 43 it's crazy but jj watt is the top four for quarterback hits since they started tracking this in 2006 right olivier vernon is at number seven in 2015 with 36 hits keep in mind he missed the first five games of the season this year and still managed to put up over 20 think about that olivier vernon had an incredible season despite playing injured and missing significant time. Hopefully he'll come back for 2019 with the Giants and be even better or even put up the same production, and that would be probably 12 or 13 sacks. You're looking at mid-30s for quarterback hits, and the top 20 since he started tracking this, John Abraham is at 20 in 2008. He had 30. Olivier Vernon would be on pace for more than that. And that's a top 20 season since he started tracking this in 2006. Keep that in mind. Pretty amazing that somebody wanted him to get traded. But I don't think you need to replace Eli right away, is my point. You know, all that, we're, we're working back around. Because you have such significant needs at almost every single level of your team. It's not necessarily just quarterback. Now, I'm going to have Dwayne Haskins in the thumbnail. It's a little bit of a stretch, because if Dwayne Haskins is available at six, he is the best quarterback in this class. 
He improved so drastically over the course of the season, it's not even funny. The first half of the season, Dwayne Haskins was was pretty good. He was beating up on, on uh, bad defenses, but he didn't look great in the pocket. He struggled against pressure, and his accuracy was touchy at times. But the, the latter half of the season, oh my God, Dwayne Haskins was hitting the different levels of the field like it was nothing. He was annihilating zone, especially in their ball game. Dwayne Haskins was fantastic. And it, for, for me, when you're evaluating a quarterback's ability, it isn't so much about stats. It's where are they putting the football? How do they deal with pressure? What are their reads like? How well do they throw the ball? What's their arm talent like? These are the things I care about. I don't care about he had four touchdowns passing against, I don't know, like Old Dominion. I, that wasn't a game on their schedule, but, I mean, that's that's the point of reference. I don't care about a big touchdown game against a poor defense, especially when you consider a lot of his touchdown passes were throwing underneath to ridiculously fast Ohio State receivers like Paris Campbell who end up getting into the end zone. A lot of his yards is yards after the catch. So... I don't really care about sats so much as I do ability. Paris Campbell had 90 catches for over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. Uh, He was absolutely phenomenal. He averaged about 12 yards per catch, had a long of 78. He's a deep threat. He's a burner. He does so much with the ball after he catches it. That's a lot of the yards for Dwayne Haskins. But the second half of the season, he started doing everything correctly. It was beautiful to see. It was incredible to watch. That's why I truly believe that he is the number one quarterback in this class now. Would he be with Justin Herbert? Maybe not. I think it would be a 1A, 1B type of uh, situation there. But Dwayne Haskins is the best quarterback. But will he be available at six? Maybe, maybe not. With the teams that need a quarterback, you're talking about, you know, maybe the Giants, even if you're keeping Eli, even if he's been decent, which I think Eli did well with what he had, um you still need a quarterback. He's 38 years old. How long is this guy going to be able to play? That's a big question. It really is. Uh, But when you start to look at the other positions of need for the Giants, is it worth it to trade up for a quarterback? Because you might have to trade up to number one if you're going to want Haskins. Because you got the Jags. You got the Redskins along with the Giants. You have the Broncos. You have a lot of teams in the the market for a quarterback. You do. And if they're going to trade up to get him, which is looking more and more likely. If you're the Giants that are as weak as you are at so many different positions, are you really going to trade up and give away picks in order to move all the way up? I wouldn't. I don't think so. Because when you look at the Giants, Curtis Riley's their starting free safety. You need to do better than that. Landon Collins, I like, if, but you might not even be able to retain him. He's a free agent this year. At middle linebacker, you have Tay Davis... You have B.J. Goodson, and Alec Ogletree has played a lot. All of those inside linebackers, you need to upgrade. All of them. At cornerback, Janoris Jenkins, probably need to upgrade him. You just do. B.W. Webb should not be starting in the NFL. He is terrible. Olivier Vernon's fine at that 3-4 right outside linebacker spot. And I really like what Lorenzo Carter can do. I like his potential. He's decent, but he's a rotational player. You have Josh Morrow. At left end, not good. I like B.J. Hill. I think he had a pretty good season. I love Dalvin Tomlinson. He was fantastic. Um, But I think Kareem Martin is bad. He's another guy that was getting a lot of snaps at that left end spot. At left outside linebacker when they moved into the 3-4. You can't do that. Another player that played a lot. Grant Haley at cornerback. Can't be your starting cornerback in in the nickel. Can't do it. On the offense side of the ball. I like Odell a lot, obviously. Sterling Shepard's good. But outside of that, you have Benny Fowler? Corey Coleman? Really? Really? Cody Latimer is playing? These are special teamers at best. Corey Coleman couldn't even get a start on the Browns. Think about that. He couldn't stay on the Browns. At tight end, Evan Ingram is fine. On your offensive line, Nate Solder came on really strong at the end of the year in the latter half. Will Hernandez had a solid season. John Greco is going to be a free agent, and even he wasn't that good. Jamron Brown was decent, not great, and Chad Wheeler was an absolute disaster. He looked like a wheel, spinning and spinning and spinning, watching the defensive ends run around him to the quarterback. It was just an absolute disaster. So when you have all these positions of need, safety, potentially safety again, cornerback, 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 
Outside linebacker, inside linebacker, inside linebacker. Defensive end. Maybe even defensive tackle. That's just on the defensive side of the ball. You're going to take a quarterback? You're going to trade up picks when you have all those positions in need just on the defensive side of the ball to get a quarterback? And I know a quarterback's important. I do. This class is nothing special. If the Giants take Drew Locke, I'm going to blow my brains out. If the Giants take a quarterback in round one that is not Dwayne Haskins, I'm going to be pissed. You need a center. You need a right guard. You need a right tackle. You potentially need a receiver. Not round one. God, no, not round one. But you need all these positions. Offensive tackle, offensive guard, center, defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker, inside linebacker, corner, safety. You're going to trade picks to get a quarterback? I hope not. I hope to God the Giants don't do that. If you look at the Giants down the, uh, down the line, by the way, as their schedule got later and later into the year, the Giants are a team that played a lot better down the stretch. The Giants were not terrible. Now, I know their record, terrible. Only five wins. Speaks for itself, right? Well, does it? Let's go over the Giants' schedule starting in week one. They played the Jaguars, a team at the time that was considered to be pretty good. Top defense, obviously, that, that didn't work out as their offense was horrific. Blake Robbie Bortles is a terrible option at, a, at quarterback. The Giants lost by five points to the Jaguars. Lost by seven to the Cowboys the next week. Beat the Texans that ended up being a playoff team, 27-22, five-point win. Lost to the Saints, 33-18. If you take away the garbage time touchdown by Alvin Kamara, uh, or Kamara, which was like a 60-yard run, take away seven points there. Um, it's a lot closer of a game, obviously. Obviously it is. It's only it's, it's less than 10 points at that point. Giants lost to the Panthers, who were on a roll at that time. Obviously, their second half of the season was horrific. Giants lost 33-31 on a last-second field goal. Giants got crushed by the Eagles. That's fair. 34-13, they ended up being a playoff team. They got beat by the Falcons by three. Lost to the Redskins by seven, who would have been a playoff team if they didn't lose their quarterback. Um... Later on, Alex Smith, vicious injury. Hate to see it. They beat the 49ers, another close game, 27-23. Beat the Buccaneers, 38-35. Lost to the Eagles by three, a playoff team. Beat the Bears, a playoff team, by three. And the Bears, of course, uh, did not have Trubisky for that game. Crushed the Redskins, 40-16. to For the first time, the Giants scored more than um, or 40 or more points in the last 10 years, I think. It was a ridiculous stat or five, something ridiculous. I, I don't have the exact number, so I apologize. But this was the first time that the Giants scored 40 or more points in a ridiculously long time. And when they had 38 points against the Bucks, one of the first times they scored above 35 in a ridiculously long time. So you beat the Redskins 40-16. You lost to the Titans 17 nothing. Another team that was pretty good. This was a rainy, disgusting game. No offense could happen. I get that. No Odell's tough. And then you lose to the Colts on a last second score by one point. Another playoff team. They beat the Texans. They're moving on. So the Giants lose 28-27. Then you lost to the Cowboys. Another playoff team moving on with a last second score. Touchdown, an extra point to Cole Beasley. That made it, or a two-point conversion that made this 36-35. So the Giants, in the final two weeks of the season, with all the starters playing except for Tyron Smith in the Cowboys game, they lost by one to the now divisional round Cowboys, lost by one to the now divisional round Indianapolis Colts. The Giants really got going at the end of the season, and their team was garbage. This is a Giants offense that just started clicking. And if you can get Odell and Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard all going at the same time, not to even mention Saquon Barkley, I don't think you upgrade quarterback. I think you have the weapons, you have the tools in place, you have to upgrade the offensive line. That needs to be a priority for the Giants in the offseason. The free agent class is not incredible, but you have your solid left tackle and left guard. Your left side of the field is fine. Seems like the Giants like Jalapio, or Jalapio at center, which, all right, he comes back, that's fine. But you need to potentially upgrade right tackle badly. I like the way Jamon Brown played down the stretch. His PFF grade is not great, but I think he played better uh, in, in game than his, his rating shows. But Chad Wheeler was a disgrace. So you upgrade right tackle, maybe even center, and then focus solely on the defensive side of the ball. You've got a team that can compete for the for a playoff spot. In the weak NFC East, are you kidding me? That's very doable. I know the NFC East had two playoff teams. They were weak. Do not try to argue with me. The Redskins, I know they would have made the playoffs without, um, without the injury to Alex Smith. 
but it's a weak NFC East. It's it's up for anyone to grab it. These teams came on strong down the stretch. That's how they made the playoffs. But point being, are you really going to sacrifice your future, potentially, to take a quarterback, to trade up for one? If Dwayne Haskins is there, is there at six, all right. It's a different conversation. But you do not take Drew Locke at six. You do not take Daniel Jones at six. You do not take Will Greer at six. You don't take Ryan Finley. Whoever you want to say, you don't take anyone. You don't even consider anyone but Dwayne Haskins at number six. I know this was probably a long-winded video. I just had to rant a little bit. The Giants are going to be in a better position if they don't take a quarterback. If Jonah Williams is there at six, Jonah Williams, right? Maybe. Right tackle immediately. And your offensive line is now pretty good. Ed Oliver, Quinn and Williams, Cleveland Farrell, and it is, it, yeah, it's crazy. It's not Farrell. He doesn't say it like Will Farrell. He says it like referral. Farrell. Cleveland Farrell. Weird. But if Cleveland Farrell's there, if Devin White's there, you haven't had a good linebacker since Antonio Pierce, who you signed in like 2008 or 2006, excuse me, or 2005, one of those years. I think it was 2005 or 2006. One of those years. Um, Devin White would be an instant upgrade to anybody you have. It adds speed to your linebacking core, and it's something that they haven't had in forever. Antonio Pierce was 2005, by the way. Um, just like, you have so many other needs. Greedy Williams, even. Deontay Thompson. DeAndre Baker. I don't care. You cannot trade up for a quarterback. And if Dwayne Haskins is not there at six, you don't think twice. You go with your best player available, and I can guarantee you that's not a quarterback. Hope you guys enjoyed this rant style of video, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.